Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And today is part two of my sowing and growing series for May. This is the sowing part of the series, so it's what I'm sowing in May. Uh, we take a quick look back as well at uh, what we sowed in April and do it on the com computer so you can see the database that I use to manage everything allotment related and growing and gardening related. Um, and I'll show you a new feature as well at the end that I've just uh, added to the database that I'll be releasing soon. So with that, let's get on. So I'm recording this in between hail showers and sunny spells. Not a good time to be gardening outdoors. So perfect time to be in here looking at the plans for May. So I'm starting off with beetroot and I'm growing red ace this year. And uh, not for my storage crop, but for my eating crop through summer and early autumn. And that's because we had a lot of problems with a kind of fungal leaf spot last year. And apparently Red Ace is resistant to that. So we're going to give that a go. And all my all time favourite really be true is still Burpees Golden. So uh, lots of those. We did uh, sow a couple of trays of these last month as well. And they're do both doing pretty well. I've got one tray to pot on so I have to plant out next week and one tray that I planted out last week. New Zealand spinach so we had a failed germination because I used last year's seed I just wanted to see if I could uh, germinate that rather than throw it away but I've only got about 20% uh, of those plants germinating so I think I'll sow from uh, this year's seed packet and we love New Zealand spinach it's uh, just a top crop for us it's incredibly prolific and it really takes over from uh, true spinach in about June time when uh, true spinach is just going to seed almost as soon as you sow it so there's not much point uh, growing it but uh, New Zealand spinach doesn't bolt it just goes all the way through from June all the way through until well, until the first frost, really, uh, so until you know, middle, middle of October, nearly November sometimes. But we normally take it out a bit earlier than that because uh, the true spinach is back and New Zealand spinach does set a lot of seed. So uh, if you leave it in the ground too long, you're just covered, you know, your beds are covered with seed. Just this will be my last tray of, of radish. We're not a big fan of radish in the summer just goes woody uh, too quickly and we've got just got so much other stuff to eat um, so anyway last batch of radish until the autumn and then my main crop um, beans so we've got cobra uh, and this purple climbing bean and uh, just scarlet empire runner beans I don't actually know what variety I use I just save my seed from year to year I've lost track of uh, what the original variety was uh, but I just uh, put it in here as Scarlet Empire. Um, and we've got lots of beans at the moment in the ground. So we've got uh, runner beans and French beans in the polytunnel. And they're as tall as me, you know, enough. And then we've got the same in the back garden in little bubble wrap tents. And actually they're doing surprisingly well, uh, despite this recent uh, bad weather. Uh, but these are the main crops. So these are going to go into the back garden and the allotment. And I've got my uh, autumn uh, autumn carrots. So the summer carrots are already in and they're growing pretty well. They're about an inch tall. Uh, so this batch is for autumn. And I've also just sown my winter uh, ones. You'll see my next batch of winter ones later on probably in this list. And then we've got early purple. Uh, so this we've got lots of purple sprout and broccoli for summer. Uh, that's already growing. Um, if you're interested in that, we'll look at uh, what we sowed in April. But this is just an early, when it says early, it means early next year, really. So this is sort of January, February, March, and then the claret uh, takes over in uh, April and May. And then this is my second batch of cabbages, winter cabbages. So I've already got 24 sown. Um, they won't all grow into strong plants and so I'm assuming I'll probably get 12 really good uh, strong plants and then hopefully 12 uh, from these two batches uh, giving me 24 winter cabbages in total which is about what I'm looking for 
and then this is my second batch of Golden Purslane I'll sow another batch in June um, although it does last all the way through summer I find the plants get a bit tired we pick them very hard um, and uh, you know gradually after about six or seven weeks of picking they're not the best and uh, it's much nicer to have a new batch on the go and then I've got three uh, four actually four different varieties of lettuce Navarro which is one of my absolute favorites um, Grenoble Red another favorite it's actually you know really a fantastic winter lettuce Grenoble Red but we, we've just fallen in love with it and we like it in summer as well and then this one another challenging name let's call it Canasta um, and this is a nice crunchy uh, lettuce by all accounts never grown it before so I thought I would give it a go and then Bijou another favorite of mine last all the way through until autumn late autumn actually Bijou uh, and in the polytunnel it will go through winter but you do tend to get a bit of green fly on it so you have to be careful with that but um, yeah so that's this is my third succession of outdoor lettuces um, I'll do another one um, in the sort of beginning of July um, so uh, yeah and then there's my uh, Eskimo winter carrots I've not grown these before but uh, we're really working hard to make sure we have uh, fresh carrots uh, all the way through the year and so Eskimo is a big part of that plan apparently it holds really well in the ground and uh, so it's kind of strange you're planting it in May and you're not really harvesting it probably until sort of November December time and then leaving it in the ground all the way through till sort of March April we've just started harvesting our October sown uh, carrots uh, and uh, so they're, they're really lovely at the moment nice and fresh uh, the key with carrots over winter by the way is is really you don't want them to grow very much uh, this year so you plant them in October and they stay a very small plant so only probably you know one inch or maybe two inches tall all the way through until sort of you know the beginning of March and then they shoot back into growth um, and so you get them way way earlier than you would if you planted them in March um, as I say you know we're just starting harvesting them now and you think all the way through winter you think what a waste of time having these lettuces these uh, these carrots but uh, as soon as they burst back into life again in March then you realize why you bothered uh, and then yet another I'm always sowing um, spring onions and most of the time I actually just sow stir on I prefer it to white Lisbon um, but if you sow stir on now it just starts to bulb um, because it is a bulbing onion uh, so it's fantastic sown earlier in the year and later in the year but right now when all the onions are just you know main crop onions are just starting to bulb uh, it's not the best one to sow and oh I said it was my last batch of French, uh, French breakfast radish but actually this is my last batch of French breakfast radish and uh, more spring onions and then Touchon that's a lovely carrot one of the uh, viewers on my YouTube channel I don't remember the name recommended it to me last year and I thought oh, I'll give it a go and it was absolutely fantastic as a storage carrot in the ground we harvested probably the last of our Touchon about January time and this is my intention with this batch as well that uh, it'll stay in the ground until sort of November time and it'll see us through sort of November to January then we switch to the Eskimo um, and then purple haze and I do find the purple haze uh, and all the purple carrots they stand in the ground as well really well so uh, yeah so I'll have another batch of those so that I think is pretty much everything that I'm planning to sow in May I always add in things as little opportunities sort of crop up but uh, yeah so let's just have a quick look back at April so we'll just fly through this but uh, these are the first crown prints here these are just my test batch to see whether they would germinate okay and they germinated great and the plants are so healthy um, but they're massive and I can't really plant them out I don't like planting my squash out until June um, 
and I'm just like, what am I going to do with these massive plants? So I said to Debbie this morning, I was going to compost them. And she was up in arms about it. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. So I've found some really big pots and I've just put them in those and uh, <laughs> they're in the conservatory. Goodness knows, they'll be massive plants. Uh, maybe I'll plant them out middle of May or something and just uh, see how they go. But all of my um, main crop squash, you know, they're only about six inches tall at the moment or maybe four inches tall, really small little plants. Um, so, uh, yeah, they've got plenty of growing to do yet until June. Um, so I'm not going to talk about everything here, but you can just sort of get the impression. So my first succession of all of the flowering uh, brassicas, so uh, Sante, which is a lovely summer purple sprouting broccoli, Atlantis, which is a green sprouting broccoli, green sprouting broccoli, which is surprisingly a green sprouting broccoli, um, and uh, some Calabrese, Marathon and Dececo. So you saw all those, I think. And then Romanescos, we've got some really lovely Romanescos in the ground at the moment, uh, and they are about 18 inches tall, so they're not far off. And then this is uh, the batch that will replace those. And then we've got uh, Perpetual Spinach. I don't like to sow my chard um, until uh, late uh, April, uh, but I like to sow my Perpetual Spinach at the beginning. And so that's just ready for planting out now. And that's the Matador Spinach, which... Every time I see it, I get angry. You know, two whole trays actually planted one of them out, all went to seed. Uh, cucumber fem spot, they're the ones that I like to do in the uh, conser in, not in the conservatory, in the polytunnel. Uh, little plants actually, I'm slightly behind with those. Um, I think I'm probably two weeks behind with those. Uh, so I'm ready to plant my tomatoes out, but not really my cucumbers yet. Um, and then a lot of people have got outdoor tomatoes that they're itching to actually plant outside at the moment um, I don't do that because I've got the polytunnel I really just look to the polytunnel to provide uh, early tomatoes and this year of course I've got the ones in the conservatory to provide even e earlier ones so I'm in no rush really to get my outdoor ones out uh, but I just did s eight uh, tumblers um, but uh, my uh, Real outdoor ones haven't even germinated yet, so uh, lots of those still to come. And then I planted my um, potatoes slightly earlier than I did last year, so sort of fingers crossed I made the right decision there. Um, but Sarpamira, King Edward and Charlotte's, and then lots of leeks, and that was my first succession of the winter cabbages. Uh, and I did pop it, I mean, strictly speaking, I think of red drumhead as an autumn cabbage, but I've just sown a late batch just to see if I could get a few uh, through to winter. Um, I find the later you sow them, you know, the smaller the heads, obviously, but uh, they are a big favourite of ours. And some summer cauliflower. We like to grow the, this purple graffiti in summer. Um, and then... More, all my sprouts are ready for planting out now, my main crop ones that will be harvested over winter. Um, but I do like these red rubine. Uh, they're a really late uh, sprout, so they come sort of February, March time, uh, which is really fantastic. But uh, we like the leaves on them as well, um, which is no surprise since we're a massive fan of sprout leaves. First batch of New Zealand spinach, that's the one that didn't germinate very well. Hurricane squash. Uh, and the crown prince, so there's my main crop, uh, squashes. Um, some more cucumber lodiva to replace the ones that died or were dying in the polytunnel. Um, and then we've got centre cut and trumpuccino. Centre cut is kind of a slightly smaller version of the trumpuccino. Um, and these are a fantastic um, summer squash much more kind of winter squash like in a way than uh, courgettes uh, but it's basically a way to get uh, something that's better than a courgette maybe not quite as good as a winter squash uh, in summer and so we grow those in the polytunnel as well um, uh, to get a super early crop so hopefully by the time we run out of crown prince in the store and we've got i think we've got four maybe five left 
hopefully we'll uh, at least have flowers on the um, on these uh, summer squashes and then we've got uh, the dwarf French beans and these this is the batch to replace the ones that failed for me last year uh, sorry earlier uh, in April with that hard frost and I think that's kind of pretty much everything that's worthy of mention oh the crimson crush these are the blight resistant outdoor uh, cordon tomatoes uh, so I'm only growing four of those because obviously I've got so many cordon tomatoes in the polytunnel. Uh, but it is nice to have a few at home. Mostly at home we're growing uh, cherry tomatoes for salads. Um, and this, these are the ones that uh, have yet to germinate. And there we go, there's my uh, chard which I've just, uh, just sown. It's not germinated yet. Cucamelon's not germinated yet. Gherkins not germinated yet. Sweet corn, early bird, and incredible. Both of those. That this one's all up, incredible, and the early bird is uh, all chitted and planted, but not through surface yet. So uh, yeah, um, Nigel from the Muddy Boots channel he got me onto this incredible. So uh, I've got high hopes. He gave it a very strong recommendation, and so that's the one we're growing as our main crop and that's going to be interplanted uh, with the uh, crown prince and the uh, butternut squash uh, so uh, there's going to be a big bed of those i think uh, 24 something like that uh, and they give multiple um, cobs per plant so maybe if we're lucky 48 cobs so that should keep us going and yeah last but not least the uh, parsnips so that's a quick look at april and may and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed this video oh i should say this database and all the other databases that i've got so my uh, database of all the different types of veg that i grow all the different varieties of veg that i grow it takes a while for that to come up these are the ones that i'm sowing this year including all the berries and fruit trees and all that apps i just love <laughs> in winter you know when there's nothing going on i just love scrolling through here and looking at all the amazing things that we're going to be eating in summer it's uh yeah it's it's really lovely so uh yeah you can get this database with my data in it um uh or you can uh, get it uh, uh, without it and just put your own data in or you can get it with my data and then put your own data m make modifications to mine um, so uh, yeah lots of options there it's all described in links in the description of this video um, and then these are all my seed packets I really do um, love the uh, love this uh, it's, it's so it's so fantastic uh, to know every seed packet that you've got um, and uh, yeah it's fantastic I've got photos of them all and somebody recommended I had photos of the back of the packets as well so I've got that in the database now uh, it's just fantastic it makes it so easy to find things and when I'm thinking what shall I sow uh, I want something say from a flowering brassica that I can easily just look up uh, all the different seed packets for flowering brassicas that I've got and uh, get those planted and because I get a lot of free seeds from magazines and I get a lot of free seeds gifted to me um, I have a lot of seed packets and so uh, yeah it's, it's, it's really fantastic um, and then I keep a track of my first harvest dates and I love this comparing first harvest dates from year to year um, we're only about two weeks earlier than uh, last year on first harvest dates and then of course I keep track of everything that I'm sowing which you've just seen um, but I've just started doing this now which is a new way of bed planning um, and so it's let me just go to this view this is kind of where I do the the rough plan so this is very spreadsheet like um, and so basically I've just got you know each variety um, by month and so I can easily just cut and cut and paste and move things around on here 
uh, makes it really really simple but the real beauty of this is that I can click on any one of these entries here and it brings up the record in my varieties database I can see the seed packets that I've got for it uh, you know planting information you know all that sort of thing so I really like that but what I've just been doing actually is I've just been balancing the plan effectively making sure that I've got just the right amount of everything uh, at each time of year uh, and so for example let's take a look at the child planner so this just brings up every bed so these are all the beds SR Steve Richards bed 18 West uh, and so that's so that's my plot um, and so I can see I've got child here up until May and then I switch that bed over to sweet potatoes and I include um, perpetual spinach in the child family so that I can see that I've got these two beds here and so I can just look and if you take a look at say August I can see well I've got one bed of perpetual spinach on my plot there another bed on my plot another bed on my plot another bed on my plot and another bed on my plot so I've got four five beds um, and then we've got some fill-in um, beds uh, in the front garden where we've also got a uh, child and perpetual spinach so I can see exactly where I've got it growing and for which months I've got it growing and I've got that for all the main things that I'm you know so I've got a cauliflower planner for example here and all of this is just looking at that same data so there's only one source of data it's just this is just a fantastic kind of visual representation of everything for the whole year um, it just makes it really really simple for me to see uh, how many cauliflowers I've got uh, and when they're harvesting and what's for, what's replacing them and all of that sort of thing uh, I'll just pull up one more perhaps so uh, the lettuce planner so this shows me again all the uh, lettuces that I've got in all the different beds and I often find that I've certainly got too much or too little in certain months and this is just makes it super simple to see uh, and then look for a bed uh, that I want to replace so if you look and I've also got my whole all 143 beds and containers that we've got in total and so I can pull all of that up in one massive view here uh, so that's the whole all the beds on all the allotments with everything that we've got growing so I'm really really happy with this uh, it's such a big improvement and I'm a very visual person and if I'm looking at this uh, planning grid I just can't see the wood for the trees here you know I, I mean it's great when I'm looking at an individual bed um, but I'm great when I'm cutting and pasting data around, moving things from bed to bed and all of that sort of thing. It's super easy for doing that. So it is definitely the sort of working uh, planning uh, view onto the database. And this is, uh, you know, it's fantastic. But I just can't see it. You know, I can't look at it and think, ah, right, that's my, that's the plot. Whereas, uh, you know, when I bring this up, it just makes it, super easy and of course I kind of just apply a filter here and say I just want everything in the polytunnel for example I've just put PT in there for polytunnel and so now I can see the whole planting plan by month for the polytunnel and I love it you know it's just so easy to manage by comparison so I think that's it that's a lot more than just um, <laughs> a quick look at what I'm sewing but uh, anyway, hope you found this interesting. And I haven't actually released uh, this particular thing, this bed planning tool yet. Uh, I'm just working on planning my own um, beds for this year and the beginning of next year uh, at the moment while well, we've got a few rainy days. And based on my experience of doing that, if it works okay for me, uh, then I'll, uh, I'll release this version and anybody can download it with or without my data. So, with that, 
I think uh, I'll draw to a close. So, hope you enjoyed this quick video. I'll see you soon. Busy week next week, lots of planting.